Most people in America are not fully familiar with homelessness and how it can fully come about by cybercrime, identity theft, and fraud on our lives. Private records are private records. Financial records and banking institutions hold our private records. Life insurance policies and legacy plans are a part of our private records. Our immoral behavior is never really the problem in the world today. Illegal behavior is the problem of America today. Illegal behavior says, I'm going to steal this, I'm going to take this, I'm going to use this, I'm going to do this because I need it for me and my family. The problem is if you don't own it, then you've just committed a major fraud on someone else's life. And cybercrime and identity theft is just that. You are pretending to be someone on their video channel. You are pretending to be someone on their LinkedIn channel. You are pretending to ruin someone's life by thinking you have the rights to give information to a security company to ruin someone's life on Twitter. And if your department head told you to do that, if your supervisor at a low end part of retail got you to do that, or if the divisional manager of a corporation got you to do that, you are all three of you, four of you, liable. And openly, a private class action lawsuit could take your house, take your car, and take everything from you. But when it comes to cybercrime, someone's decided to pretend to be you. They decide to get into your house. They decide to change titles on property that you've written. They decide to change your name back if you had one before that you didn't like. And openly, we're just talking about how people are ill will. I was always having things moved around in my apartment that I didn't understand because the only person with the key allegedly besides me was the money manager of my mother who was basically given that key because she was entrusted by my father and the whole reason for the key is much like other people in our community do this. That if something happened to me, in other words if I had a heart attack and died, at some point someone in my biological family or my bloodline would need to know it and have the right to open the door to check if I was okay. That was the only reason, the only stipulation that that key might have been used in any way. At no time was that authorization to come in willy-nilly and move things about and harass or steal or take. But we had maintenance men and we had an apartment woman who was a part of the sales community there that was often spouting off on things that she shouldn't have known about me there. And openly it made me aware because I'd come home and find things moved around on my sink. I'd come home and find things that I hadn't quite unpacked yet and unearthed yet to settle my apartment there constantly removed from there. But the minute I would talk about it being stolen on my YouTube channel, poof, it would come back to the same box it was supposed to be in. You see, liars of America like to figure out how to steal. I had full unearthly collections of gemstones and rocks and things that I had put together for my metaphysical practice removed. I had bracelets that I wore like other people did at that time when it was popular to wear a rubberized bracelet that said something, that promoted something, that did something, that supported things. In other words, I'm probably being repetitive, but people were wearing them back then being cut off my dresser. I had documents on my car ripped apart. I found in my vehicle in the morning the next day a post-it note with the amount of money that was in my bank account. At the time it was about 10 grand, but who the hell was that with their girly hand writing in a bubbly type of lettering that note? And why is it that it was left in my vehicle or actually dropped in some way to show and promote the immoralness and illegalness of whoever that was? In life, we have to know what is and isn't right, but I also noted that someone had created a second business card for me, not at all, but actually a second Visa card to my bank account. I noticed that the numbers were different, and here's how I noticed, because the Lord speaks to everyone. And in that case, I heard in the angelic realm, and people don't like to call it that, but that's what I call it for me, because underneath the First Amendment, we have freedom of religion, that openly they said, check the numbers and pay attention to that. And a short time later, I was noticing that I was running out of money, and I couldn't understand that. And as I was trying to match up the receipts to the purchases, I was often finding double pricing. In other words, someone was going about pretending to be me by following what I did in my purchasing and just going to purchase at those places so it would look like me. In life, we have to recognize that people who work for our companies can completely and utterly put us in a lawsuit. And instead of taking their immoral employees to jail, instead of doing the proper investigation of them there, they instead decided to attack me and ruin me and put things in that document 
in front of a judge that didn't belong there, and who the hell gave him that? I'd like to know that, but it was someone allegedly in law enforcement, well, I guess it was the person who illegally unlocked locked suitcases that were in my closet. Now, when I tell you more of the story, you're like, whoa, what's the secret? None of your business. The bottom line is, you know I'm a very big proponent of not going to this mass, huge connection of technology across our medical records. You see, medical rights are something that also has privacy today. And when I talk about issues, I'm talking about what people have experienced in abuses today. When I'm talking about how the abusiveness harms lives today, I'm including you in that talk because at any time, anyone in law enforcement can walk into your house and say, we're taking you here because we just think you're not right. We don't want to take you to jail because that wouldn't be right. And openly they can lie about it, but you end up with a $10,000 bill. And that's a real problem for people. It bankrupts people. And who the fuck was that person to even be there? You see, lying siblings do that to ruin people's rights and records so they don't have to share inheritance that's due them sin. And that is not only immoral because it wasn't their money in the first place, it's highly illegal. But they can convince anybody with any story. And even we're seeing in social media channels the illegalness of companies suggesting that some total stranger or some colleague has the right to say that someone is not right anymore. Did you know that? I just noticed that today, and I think we should sue them for that. At no time should a company that is way third party in our lives have the right to do that. I just recently got some documents back that somebody erased by LinkedIn's standards, probably their engineer or somebody like that, and it just reappeared after those conversations were missing, but I'm still really looking for that connection that should be there. Openly in life, we have the right to our own records, online and offline, and we are the sole single proprietor, usually, of controlling that information there. When I reach out to someone on LinkedIn, what I look about is what most marketing people look for. Is the person proactively online? Are they using their LinkedIn profile at all? Do they have the right to really be there in terms of their companies? Because if they've only been in the company position a year, they might not be savvy enough, seasoned enough, or understanding, and I hate to say worthy enough, by their corporations or by the community to get the contact there. Most CEOs are concerned with their publicity. Most professionals, regardless of the size of their organizations and the billion dollars or million dollars or less, much less, that they might earn, are openly concerned with their publicity, their PR. We talk about how to get a good personal brand and professional brand in marketing, especially in small business networks. But there are still people who are perverse that will lie about their experiences because they warped their perspectives.